Good morning, uh, class of 2021. This is Mrs. Oves, and um, I'll be walking you all through um, how to build a college resume this morning. So I'm going to be sharing my screen with you and pulling up a PowerPoint presentation. Um, so just bear with me as I get that up for you. I haven't quite mastered the Zoom conferencing um, situation, so just bear with me. I hope everybody is doing well. Um, one moment as I pull that up. You're going to see here um, that I, I did create a PowerPoint, um, but most of the things that I'm going to be covering um, are going to be through discussion. So I'm glad that I have the opportunity to videotape this presentation. So um, basically when you're developing your resume, you just want to think about what are your most impressive things that you've done throughout high school. And sometimes students make the mistake of um, highlighting things from middle school and things like that. And we really just want to focus on high school experiences. So what's the most important um, thing that you've done throughout high school? So maybe you were involved in athletics or very involved in art or music or theater. Um, those are the things that we typically want you to highlight and we'll we'll go through um, how to outline that in a minute. So what is the purpose of the college resume? Um, basically it gives the admissions offices um, some insight into what makes you tick and what you're passionate about. Um, it gives admissions offices a window into who you are um, and how you will contribute to their their campus community. So it is a great opportunity for you to sort of highlight and we don't want you to stress if you don't have a million things to include on your resume, that's fine. They're looking for three to four things that you really got involved with over time. So um, if you're looking at um, re sample resumes online and you see that students have millions of things on there, don't be discouraged, it's okay. Um, a lot of students hold back on their resume and I don't know why. Um, this is an opportunity for you to really brag about yourself and your accomplishments. So, you know, feel free to be verbose. Um, don't recap all your academics. So when we send your college applications in, uh, we're sending in a transcript with your, um, all of your applications, which is going to highlight your courses that you took, how you did in those courses, your GPA, um, and things of that nature. So the resume really isn't for a recap of academics because they're already getting that. It's really just to highlight your extracurricular activities. Um, the resume will be used for a lot of different things in the next few months. Um, certainly this time senior year is when scholarship application season's really, really on full steam ahead. So you'll be utilizing it for scholarship applications. You'll be using it for requests for a letter of recommendation. And I'll be putting together a video um, for you next week or the week after break, um, explaining how the request for a letter of recommendation process works. Um, so you don't have to worry about that now, but the first step would be to create an updated resume. So what do you highlight on your resume? So I just broke it down into three areas. So you have your header, um, which is gonna, going to be obviously your full name, your home address, your email address, and your cell number. I wanna cycle back to the email and the cell number. I know I said this in previous presentations, but I really want you all to have a college application email address. So you might have an email address that you've had since third or fourth grade, Surfer Chicks 67, whatever. Um, we really want you to update that email address into something professional. And it could just be an email address that you use for everything, um, test registration, college applications, communication with Ocean City High School. Um, try to not put the OCSD email as many of you are not able to access your email um, through the OCSD account. So the email is really critical and um, we wanna make sure that that's updated. Um, the cell, if you include your cell number, please, please, please update your voicemail. Make it professional. It doesn't have to be fake, but you obviously don't wanna have um, you know, a silly um, voicemail response. So then we're going to segue into academics. And the sample that we have in the post-secondary planning guide can show you the format. Um, but you basically put your high school name, date of graduation, you could just put June um, 2021. That would be fine. Um, your GPA. So the GPA should be your cumulative GPA, not semester, not marking period. 
Um, and if you need to know what your cumulative GPA is, you can check Naviance or, and or email your school counselor for that information. Um, you can include test scores if you want to. Many of you haven't had an opportunity to even take one yet, so you can just skip over that um, unless it's unless there's something, you know, unless you have a test score that's impressive. Um, for those of you who had AP exams in the past, you can include that as well. If, say you got a three, four, or five, um, if you passed any of those exams. You could also include things like um, distinguished honors or honor roll, um, you know, three consecutive years or something like that. And then sometimes students do summer experiences or enrichment or pre-college experiences. That would be a good section to add. It would be a good thing to add to that section. The heart of the resume um, is going to really focus on extracurricular activities, community service, work experience, and then also some students like to hi highlight hobbies. Um, that could be something that um, maybe you're really into hiking or mountain biking, snowboarding, something like that. And, and sometimes that's a great thing to add at the end of your resume um, because it could make you uh, maybe have that thing in common with whoever's reading your resume. I want to go back to um, the heart of the resume. You really want to list your most impressive things first, um, whatever those things might be. Um, so make sure that um, because what happens is when they're reading through your resume, they may stop um, at a certain point. So you just want those most impressive things first. Um, so I'm going to segue into um, the sample resume section. And I want to show you a sample. Uh, this is the resume worksheet. This is located at the end of your post-secondary planning guide, which is on our guidance website. Um, it's two pages, and it's a great way for you to just sort of map out how you want, what you want to put on your resume prior to putting it into format. Um, the Google Docs or Google format options are actually really nice. Some of you might have started a resume in ties, and you like the format. You like the way it looks. There's no um, black and white. Um, answer to the format of the resume. It's, it's a really gray area. It's just, it should be organized, it should be concise, it should be neat, and it should be edited and proofread. So here's a sample um, of a student that is really, really involved. Um, this is a student who um, wanted to showcase hours per week, weeks per year. And this isn't a bad idea because colleges and universities really wanna know how you're spending your time. And this student, as you can see, is heavily involved in a lot of different activities that require a lot of their time. Um, and I just wanted to make one note on the um, top of this, there's class rank. Obviously we don't class rank anymore. Um, so that might be a place where you put cumulative GPA or, or GPA um, in lieu of class rank. So this is for the really involved student. And some of you who apply for National Honor Society might already have something like this. So you can certainly use this as your academic resume as well. Um, here is a very abbreviated resume. Um, it's outdated, yes, um, but the formatting of it is, is fine and um, it gets the point across. It's neat, it's easy to follow. Um, the only thing that I feel um, the Red Raider um, resume could improve upon is if you see under um, interest and activities, it says key club president, which is great, but it doesn't tell me anything about what that president has done. So. Um, you want to highlight things like, um, I know with, you know, student council, they do the blood drive. Um, you just want to highlight various activities that you've done within that position underneath key club president. So um, things to keep in mind, you don't want it to be longer than a front and back of a page. So no more than two pages. It just gets too long, um, you know, and, and they're not going to read it. Highlight the depths of activities. I just mentioned that in the Red Raider sample. Um, you want to make sure that you're giving them an idea of what that key club president does. Um, focus on leadership and accomplishments in those activities. So don't be afraid to really put yourself out there and share all of your accomplishments within that activity or that club or that athletic team and so forth. Um, I mentioned this earlier, you don't want to include middle school activities unless you're still involved in them. For example, scouts, I know a lot of students are still involved in scouts as a junior and senior in high school. Um, maybe you did dance since you were in kindergarten, things like that, that would be absolutely fine. 
And then use impactful adjectives. Um, I'll be sending you all um, some adjective sheets and some sample resumes after this video is sent out, um, just to give you some ideas. But you know, you want want to use strong adjectives when you're explaining the different various activities that you've been involved in. Um, you can use Google Chrome Resume Builder. That is a free template. Um, you can create your own resume. Naviance does have a resume builder feature. The only thing I don't like about it is the format when you try to print it out. It has a URL address down on the bottom. So if you wanted to copy and paste um, the resume that you build in, in Naviance and put it in a Word document or a Google document to reformat it to get rid of that URL address, that would be fine as well. And then finally, I put build on existing formats. So um, maybe you created something in Ty's freshman year, you want to go back to that and add on to that, that would be acceptable as well. Um, and back when I was in high school, I had an English teacher who said to me, anytime you put your name on something, you want to be proud of it. And it's a representative, it's a representation of you. So when you're um, submitting this resume to your teachers for letters of recommendation and to the colleges, um, you want it to be polished. You don't want any errors on it. Um, you want it to be organized, neat, and concise. So um, make sure that you have somebody or one or two people proofread it and edit it other than you um, to make it the most impactful resume you can. And that's it for now. So I'm going to add um, the resume to your task list in Naviance. And if you're still having difficulty getting onto Naviance, please email us right away um, so that we can get you up and running so you can complete the task on time. So like I said, next week you can look forward to a video on how to request letters of recommendation, but before you can even think about requesting letters of recommendation, this resume piece needs to be completed. I hope you're all happy and safe and healthy, and I look forward to hopefully seeing all of you very, very, very soon.